Hello and welcome to all of you on your own channel. Today our topic is connecting links. In this lecture we will discuss what are connecting links and after that we will discuss how the connecting links help us in understanding the evolution and how the connecting links are an evidence in favor of evolution. Now the question is that what are connecting links? Connecting links are defined as those organisms which show characters in between two different groups. There have been found some organisms which show characters of two different but related groups and these organisms are known as the connecting links. <clears throat> Now we will see the different types of connecting links we study in evolution. The first connecting link you will study are the viruses. Viruses are non living outside the cell, but once they enter inside the cell, they behave as living organisms. It means that they show properties or characters of both that's non-living matter as well as living things. Once they enter inside the host cell, they show characters of living organisms, but once they are outside the host cell, they show characters of non-living things. So these organ, these uh, uh, what we call as viruses or the connecting links between living organisms and non-living things. By this we make the point that the living organisms have come into origin from non-living matter as has been explained by the theory of biochemical origin put forth by Oberian and Halliday. So <clears throat> virus are connecting links between non-living non-living things and living organisms now <clears throat> after that we will see the second connecting link we will be discussing is an organism known as protero Spongia. This organism Proterospongia it shows characters of both protozoans as well as porphyrins. It shows some characters of protozoans and some characters of porphyrin. So it is a connecting link between it is a connecting link between protozoa or protozoans and porphyrin. So some characters of proterospongia resemble with the animals of phylum protozoa and some characters of proterospongia resemble with the animals of uh, phylum porifera. So again by this we make a point that basically the porifera have evolved from the protozoa. Now the third connecting link we will discuss over here is peripatus. Usually when in your NEET examination the question is asked from the connecting links <coughs> mostly then it is asked about the peripets. Peripets is an organism which shows characters both of annelids as well as arthropods. So it's a connecting link between annelida and arthropoda. It's a connecting link between annelida and arthropoda. So Peripata shows some of the characters of 
analytes and some of the characters of arthropods that's why it is known as the connecting link between annelida and arthropoda it again makes a point that basically arthropods have evolved from annelids now there is another connecting link that is neopelina neopelina show some of the characters of annelids and some of the characters of molluscus so it is a connecting link between annelida or annelids and molluscus so neopelina is a connecting link between annelids and molluscus by this we make a point that basically molluscus have also evolved from the annelids after that after that there is another example of the connecting link that is balanoglossus balanoglossus this is an animal which belongs to the hemichordata subphylum and it is sometimes also known as tongue worm or it's also known as acron worm it shows some characters of non chordates and some characters of chordates so it is connecting link between non chordata and chordata again by studying this connecting link we conclude that basically these chordates have evolved from some non chordate ancestors so this is another connecting link after this we see there are some other connecting links which we will be discussing over here like the lung fishes lung fishes are a category of fishes in which lung fishes it is a category of fishes in which the swim bladder has developed into the lung you see in the fishes the respiration occurs with the help of gills that is there is branchial respiration but in lung fishes the swim bladder has developed into the lung so they exercise respiration through the lungs which we call as pulmonary respiration this is something very much unique among the fishes and these fishes are known as the uh, lung fishes the lung fishes <coughs> are of three types that is the neoceratodus it is the first type of the lung fishes then there is protopterus and another is lepidosiren again it's a very important point regarding your neat examinations you are asked about the lung fishes about the common name of the lung fishes neoceratodus is known as the australian lung fish australian lung fish and peripets is known as the african lung fish and lepidosiren is known as the american lung fish in the neat examinations you are asked which among the following fishes is known as australian lung fish there will be given three options that's neoceratodus protopterus and lepidosiren you have to choose the correct answer or you can be asked which among the following is most american lung fish the options are these three which i have mentioned over here these fishes show a unique feature that is their swim bl bladder has developed into the lung and basically we see these lung fishes are connecting links these are connecting links between fishes and amphibians 
they are connecting links between fishes and amphibians they show characters of fishes but the presence of lung or the presence of pulmonary respiration in them is a character which resembles with the amphibians so the lung fishes either lepidosiren protopterus or uh, this neoceratodus all these lung fishes show characters of fishes or pisces as well as characters of amphibians so they are connecting links between fishes and amphibians <coughs> by this we conclude that basically amphibians have also evolved from some piscine ancestors or they have also evolved from some fish ancestors after that we see <coughs> that there are some animals which we call as prototherians these are included in the class mammalia prototherians these are unique mammals because they are egg laying mammals they are egg laying mammals other mammals which are eutherian mammals they are not egg laying but this is an exceptional case prototherians these are egg laying mammals for example there is uh, ornithorhynchus 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 it is also known as duck billed platypus duck billed platypus then there is another prototherian which is known as echidna this is also egg laying prototherian so these egg laying mammals are exceptional in the way that they lay eggs and this feature of them resembles with the reptiles and rest of the features uh, they possess are the mammalian features so prototherians like the echidna and the ornitho ornithorhynchus they are connecting link connecting link between between reptiles and mammals because they are egg laying and this feature of <coughs> these animals resembles with the egg laying feature or egg laying property of the reptiles so all these connecting links make a point that basically one group of animals has evolved from another group and this is the way that how connecting links provide us an evidence that evolution has basically occurred hope that you have understood what are connecting links and what is their importance in understanding evolution for other lectures you can subscribe your own channel that's mother bill's biology color